Congratulations on finishing your open water course. Now what? As advertised, this is the standard wrap I give folks as they're finishing their open water course so they know what's out there and what to do next. Number one, be active. You've just finished a, a short compressed course, had a lot of knowledge development, has a lot of muscle skills uh, that you have to remember. My advice, stay active. Like any complicated activity, you're gonna have to keep it up to maintain the skills. And if you have a look at one of my videos, I'll, I'll link it up here. You wanna to get to the top of a hill of, of that learning curve where up here, you're kind of automatic. You've achieved some automaticity. You don't have to think about it as much. You don't have to fight to get up there. Until you get to the top of that hill, some people might not be having such a good time diving and those people tend to quit. My advice, be active, get to the top of that comfort hill. Once you're up there, you can kind of relax and if you want, not, not dive as much, but most people like it and they want to dive. Be active. Number two, find a good buddy, which is part of being active. If you have a buddy who's also active and keeps you motivated, that's going to keep you active. Uh, couples. Scuba is a great activity for couples. Scuba is kind of a, an equalizer. It's there to enjoy. Everybody's just kind of cruising around, finding stuff for each other, helping each other, enjoying with each other. It's, it's a real equalizer. Kind of related to finding a good buddy, find a good mentor or dive group. In my group, I consider diving kind of like a dojo activity. When I was in a dojo, right, everybody is kind of looking up at the better folks for what kind of techniques and form they can copy and emulate. So learning was always falling down the waterfall to the newer folks. There are, of course, courses and tests and whatnot, but learning should always be happening, even passively. Find a good group of people that you like, that have like interests to you, they're close to you, they're diving somewhere that's convenient to you, and dive with that group. Probably they'll have dives scheduled. If, if you're lucky, like when I was in Florida, a shop can be a group. The shop will have dives listed every week. You can sign up for boat dives. Uh, it's a fantastic atmosphere. And find a mentor in that group. Maybe you'll find one or two people that you really communicate well with and they have a style or a philosophy that you choose to emulate, you, you find enviable and you know, pick that person's brains once in a while. Maybe that person's your instructor, maybe not. Going along with that, find an instructor that you want to follow. If you plan on moving up the food chain of training, find a single instructor that you like their style, you like their philosophy, you communicate well with them, you connect with them, and stick with that person. The agency is not so important. Most of the agency's levels, you can mix and match if you really want or need to. However, find that good instructor that has an approach that you relate to and you admire and just stick with that instructor. That's my best advice. Know your limits with any activity. I've read tons and tons of stories of new-ish divers or divers who are maybe approaching the advanced training wannabe kind of a level and getting into situations that were over their head. It could be current, it could be waves, it could be darkness, it could be visibility, it could be seasickness, uh, rough seas, could be navigational challenges, climbing, a place you have to climb down to to get to a dive. Know your limits as a human being. This might be your age, it might be your fitness level, it might be your swimming ability, it might be your knowledge development, your knowledge about a certain environment. It might be your physical condition, meaning you might be a little incapacitated because of an illness, a sickness, an injury. When you're listening to the description about a dive, what you should be listening for, well before the dive hopefully, is anything in that dive that would exclude you from wanting to do that dive. For example, for me, if there's any plan that, that has a lot of swimming against the hard current, if someone tells me, yeah, you know, for 15 of the minutes of this hour dive, we're gonna be swimming head on into a really hard current, I'm probably gonna pass on that dive. Unless I'm gonna see like whale sharks chasing manta rays followed by a parade of porpoises and tuna and I, I don't know what. Very, very small chance I'm gonna be doing something like that. So listen to, uh, listen to the briefing, listen, or listen well before the briefing, listen, ask about the dive. If it sounds like something that, that for any of those features uh, that I mentioned before, you might not be qualified for, feel perfectly free to pass on that dive. Presumably you're gonna be diving for the rest of your life. There are lots of dives in your future. 
There's no shame in passing on one or two here and there that don't sound like they're gonna be fun for you. I have one example of that, a quick example. Maybe I'll include it, maybe I'll cut it out. There was this diver on a beautiful island that I like to dive at, Oshima. And there was this one dive site, it was a bit windy, more than a bit windy. It's a really unpleasant site if it's windy because if the waves are coming in, uh, the entry for a large part of the entry, it's like knee high and you're walking through rocks that you can't see because the waves are there and it's knocking you into rocks. It's really unpleasant. Right? I'm, I'm starting, if it's rough, you know, when I was younger, I, I didn't care. I'd go through anything. I, I'm starting to get a little sensitive to that entry myself. There was a person, I don't like to tell anybody directly, you know, I'm excluding you from this dive because I don't think your fitness level is up or something like that. Or I don't think you can be walking through a bunch of waves because of your physical condition. That's kind of a sensitive topic. I was dropping all the hint bombs I could possibly drop. I was giving my briefing, I was saying, and you know, it's a really rough entry, we're gonna be getting hit by waves, we're gonna be tripping over rocks. If anybody feels like they're not up to that physically, no shame in saying, hey, you know what, we're gonna have other dives today, just pass and you know, you can hang out at the dive center, we'll pick you up and on the way to the next dive. There might be multiple people, no judgment, no judgment, no shame, no shame in that. I was really, because I had this one diver that I knew was gonna get blown out, I thought, and I was trying to drop all of the hint bombs that I possibly could. I was a B-52 at 40,000 feet just dropping hint bombs. None of those bombs were landing. So this diver, di Diver Z, went down. I'm like, oh man, I'm trying to, you know, really take as much care as possible for this diver. And this diver got just destroyed by the waves and blown back. And I was dragging the person back onto the beach. And then the person was hating, hating me. But it's because me, I, me. <laughs> I was catching hate. <laughs> but anyway, no shame. There's no sh there's nothing shameful about I do it. Right? Maybe even because I might be sick. I mean, you could be compromised in all kinds of ways. No shame uh, in putting down a dive. The converse of that, you will attract heat if you choose to do a dive that that others will deem that you should have had some foresight and a little bit of introspection and in saying Obviously, your, for example, obviously your swimming ability was not up for this dive, or obviously you get way too seasick to have gone out on such a wavy day like this, or etc. etc. Wait a bit for advanced open water. I look at a lot of people's stats as they come through, and there are tons of people who took advanced open water immediately after open water, like back to back. So I'll, I'll look at their, and, and I don't know why, I very often see this, see this pattern. I, I, I look at, you know, because I have, I have a Google form, I ask people when they're coming along, and, and it says, what does it say? It says they have, like, I don't know, 10 dives, and they haven't dove in three years, and they're advanced. So, which means to me, okay, they did four dives for open water, then like another five or, or four, five or six for advanced. So it means that they did their open water, they did their advanced, and then not another dive. My advice to you, definitely take advanced at some point. My advice to my divers, get 15, 20 dives under your belt. Learn how to use your equipment, that you can put your equipment together and take it apart without any major help from other people, any advice. You're not forgetting which way is the tank turned? Is it like this? How's my regulator go? Um, have your buoyancy under control. Make it so that you're not crashing into the bottom. You're never running away to the surface out of buoyancy control. Uh, you know, you have reasonable buddy skills. You're comfortable in the water. That's the time to start thinking about further training. You've, you've mastered the level that you're at. My advice, get comfortable at the level that you're at. You know, diving up to 18 meters, 60 feet, whatever it is. Do a, a bunch of different environments, some shore dives, some boat dives. Maybe you, you do a dry suit dive. You're, you're comfortable with all sorts of things. Advanced open water, you're gonna get much more out of the course if, you're, if you have some, some solid skills there. Dive long enough that it's gonna take you to get your buoyancy together, equipment, familiarity together, and your general comfort. For many people, that's 15 to 30 dives, something like that. Don't waste time on BS certs unless, unless getting a lot of 
kinds of certifications is something that will motivate you. I would rather see people be intrinsically motivated by the love of diving and doing different kinds of dives rather than uh, getting all kinds of certs. But if you're gonna do a cert, I've got a recommendation for you. Ooh, boat diver, you say? <laughs> Just kidding. In my, in my instructing career, there are only two specialty cards that I normally award. One of them is Nitrox, and that's a very handy certification that I would recommend for you to go on to. It's not very skill-heavy, it's a little bit academic, but it's very practical for your diving if you can get Nitrox in your area. So Nitrox card, very recommended. Dry suit card, if you're in an area that, that gets cold, like mine, is a really good certification to get. That way you learn how to dive with a dry suit, what dry suits are about, how they work, what kinds of dry suits are there, what kinds of undergarments should I choose. You're gonna go out for a couple dives, maybe with an instructor, maybe the first one is a real orientation dive, maybe the second one you're kind of just doing your thing. It's a really handy course and I will write that card. It's also a useful card if you're gonna travel and rent a dry suit. Many centers, I'm told, will require a certification of a dry suit. And certainly, if someone came to me and wanted to dive and rent a dry suit and they've never dove a dry suit, it's, it's going to be basically an orientation slash course because you can't just, most people cannot just rock up in a dry suit and be happy. So for me, I'm going to recommend for folks to stick to the basics, which would be of course, open water, advanced, things like rescue, a nitrox, dry suit. If they're interested in dive master, interested in some kind of a tech course. I'm not such a proponent, as I said, of different dive specialties. However, honestly, if you're the kind of person who would benefit for that and it would keep you uh, engaged and in the sport, please, please go ahead. Gear. Probably, if you've taken a course, you probably have the basics, which would be your mask and your snorkel your booties and your fins. Probably, most, most dive centers would, would require or highly recommend that you purchase those. Um, also might be a wetsuit on there, I don't know. If you don't have those basics, get the basics. There's nothing more annoying than, than folks who come along, for example, and they don't have a mask because they're renting everything. And they're complaining about, oh, the mask doesn't fit me. The, ma the mask is leaking, the mask is leaking, the mask is leaking. Yes, it's a rental mask. Rental masks leak. <laughs> Masks are very personal, right? There are thin faces, there are, there are fat faces, there are bony faces, there are fleshy faces. Uh, you know, they're, they're, I have, literally, in Japan, the nose pocket is smaller. It's, it's an Asian nose pocket, and if I wear that mask, because I have a big, <laughs> the Bergerac nose, it'll bump on the mask because the, the pocket is too short. This isn't a video about how to fit a mask, but, you know, fit the mask. You know, all that dive equipment, the rental equipment, you might be unhappy with it. Get the basics, choose, choose them. Lots of videos out, out there how to choose. On the wetsuit, I, I've, got, I've got three pieces of exposure protection now. I've got a five millimeter wetsuit. I have a hooded vest. That five millimeter wetsuit and that hooded vest will take me from April, May, depending, until November, December. With those combination of those two, I can, I can go right through. Now, of course, your mileage may vary depending on how hardy you are to the cold. Technically speaking, usually women are much more sensitive to cold because of small, their body mass to surface area ratio. So smaller people are gonna be usually more affected by the cold and larger, larger padded people like me are gonna be a little bit happier. Now, on things like the BC, especially like the BC, if, if, if you look at my video about my evolution with the BC, and then you look at the comments on that video, a lot of people had a similar evolution, BC evolution as I did, which is very interesting. And the first year or two, they went through like three BCs. Because like a lot of activities, golf, tennis, skydiving, when, you, when you're a beginner, you don't know what you like. And what you like as a beginner is not what you're gonna like a year from now, if you, if you experience and you, and you do the sport. Some of those things you might want, you might want to rent. For example, uh, you know, get the basics, the personals, and then rent BCs for half a year and, and see what you like. Very often what happens is people move from very bulky, secure, safe feeling BCs to lighter, smaller, less restrictive BCs. That is a very common evolution. 
Because uh, over here, people say, yeah, I want to be protected in the water. I want to feel safe. Maybe that'll give me a little warm. It's got lots of pockets, man. I can put all kinds of stuff in there, got all kinds of D-rings. And then after a year or, or so or more of diving, you realize, oh my gosh, you know, there wasn't anything useful in those pockets and the pockets were just in my way. It was bulky. I couldn't move. Uh, wow. Something that, that's a lot less restrictive and more minimalistic suits me better. So on a BC, maybe you, you want to try a few. That's where a mentor comes in and your dive group. They can give you really good advice on this because they've gone through that evolution as well. On a regulator, regulators, personally, I find people have less personal preference for. I would stay away from gimmicks. If there are gimmicks out there, I don't know. My regulators usually are bulletproof, basic regulators. Uh, go with a major brand, something that you can get serviced uh, locally. Ask your dive group, your mentor, your instructor. They'll have good advice for you. Okay, that's about it. Please comment up. So the comments that you put here are going to help people who've recently gotten certified. I find that the most valuable part of many of these videos are the comments. So please put your advice down below. Beginners, people who've just gotten certified, I hope you really like the sport and you stick with it. There's nothing for me that hurts more. It's a heartbreaker for me when someone takes a course like that and then it was for a holiday and they never died after that or uh, yeah, something like that. They, they had a very specific purpose in mind and that's it. Usually these days, I will not take students like that. It's just a lot of work for me and my thought is you know, I wanna to add to my diving community and invest all that time in someone who's gonna be part of that community and then passing on the knowledge and enjoyment to others. So your instructor put a lot of work into that course. So do your community a service and, and stick with it if, if it's the activity for you. If it's not, definitely drop it. Okay. Thank you for listening. I will see you on the beach.